We heard today a little bit about the Asian region, Southeast Asia, super growth coming in. Right now, we've seen a couple of years of growth. A little bit of slowdown right now, but it's going to come back to growth again. But we don't see the pace of living standards growing at that same level. What we see is communities in certain pockets of this country, various other countries in Asia, being left behind. At the same time, there's a huge digital revolution going on. More and more things are going on the internet, more and things are, uh, are being done online, businesses are transforming, and, and people are getting much more access to education, uh, and activities are going on. What Telenor, together with DG, DG is part of the Telenor group, and what DG is trying to do in Malaysia is also replicated across the 13 markets that Telenor operates in. And that's to really use the internet as an equalizer in giving societies that are left behind an equal opportunity in catching up, and in some cases, taking the lead. And, and in Malaysia, we have something called Empower Societies with DG. And that's really about empowering communities, and communities such as societies that I talked about, communities that are in small areas, small locations, left behind, a little bit sub-rural, rural areas, but also children that are left behind in terms of education and their rights to education, to actually empower them in terms of using the internet to close that gap. Now, in Malaysia, there are 30 million Malaysians. One-third children, not very different from the numbers you heard earlier today. A lot of them experience the internet the first time on the mobile phone. Unlike, um, unlike Europe, where you come from, uh, Your Majesty, and uh, where there's a lot of uh, internet and um, home broadband, in, in Asia, the first use of internet is really on your mobile phone. That's why the penetration of smartphones are so high. And while every child has a right to access connectivity, regardless of race, religion, gender, and every other diversity aspect, we also have a right to protect the children on the internet. So we do a little bit of both. One, we're really driving the internet acceptance and the internet usage in Malaysia because it, it gives you access to education, information, and helps you in your level in society. But at the same time, we have a responsibility to make sure that there is a need for cyber security, especially for kids. The 100 million children coming online in the markets that Telenor operates uh, in most of these parts of the region. And those children, if we don't provide them the cyber-safe and the security education in terms of the dangers of the internet, then I think we don't do justice uh, in what we should do. So we have a cyber-safe program uh, in Malaysia. We have touched uh, about 100,000 children um, uh, and about 2,000 teachers in the last couple of years. Uh, and we intend to take that program out every year, educating children about the greatness of the internet, yet what you should and should not do on the internet. And part of that is also building, together with the Malaysian government, about 100 internet centers around the country, giving not just children access to the internet, but also adults who have never used the internet, because it's not just a children's responsibility in terms of getting education and information, it's the parents that need to, to start doing that. Our business is built and guided by the principles that support child rights. That's the foundation. And we have we've done everything right. So I'm here not going to talk about all the awards or our great sustainability reports that we have won accolades for, or our partnership with UNICEF, CRBP, or the UN Global Compact. I'm not going to talk about that because DG has been recognized and, and done for that. But what I'm going to talk about is about how I really think private sectors and, and for DG we have embedded this as part of our DNA and our culture. We talk about this every day in our, in our office, almost every day. I attend meetings on Empower Societies the same way as I do when I have a price war, or a competition, or a change in market dynamics. And I have the same passion and the same energy, sometimes annoying the team that leads uh, the Empower Societies sustainability uh, and corporate governance in our team. But that's the passion that we need to have. And some of the things that we do, we have zero, zero tolerance on HSSC, which includes child labor. So we find a company that, that uses child labor on fixing cables, wires, feeders, towers. We merely terminate that company. It's tough. It's really, really tough. Because then you get delayed on sites, you get delayed on revenue, you get everything. But it's a choice that we made a couple of years back when we wanted to become a much, much more professional company 
that embodies more than just looking at revenues and profitability, but believing in, in sustainability. And Empower Societies for us is an everyday activity. I'll give you a couple of examples. CyberSafe program. We go out there and talk to children, schools, and educate them. It's, it's a very tough topic to actually go and tell kids why they shouldn't use Facebook the way they think they should use it. But why is Facebook good and how they should use it? But we also do programs for, for women. Women in this country have, um, are slightly behind in terms of in internet usage. But it's not so much to help the women grow and develop and do business, a good business, but it's also because the women, and, and women are the core foundation and pillars of families. And they are the first ones to educate children and get children uh, onto the right paths. So we believe that by helping programs like this, we need to do more of. The last point on DG is about the brand. We are innovative, simple, we're known to be nimble, quick, and I want to use that same passion energy in this topic as well. And I firmly believe that as for private sector, we've now talked about that, I, I take that challenge and I, and, I think, and I think going forward, brands that are going to be winners in the marketplace are brands that are going to do two things. They're going to believe in sustainability, good governance and good business. That includes how we treat children. But we're also going to be attracting the best talents in that country when you choose to do this. So one is you will get consumers and good business. The other one is you're going to be able to get the best talents doing this. I can guarantee you, when I talk to young, a lot of young people now in universities and stuff, the first thing, or the top three things that they ask me after growth, career, is what are we doing in this space for environment and sustainable business? But I want to leave this forum with a thought. For us in DG, there's lots to do. Uh, we are super energized um, and inspired to do it every day. But the challenge is still a challenge. We're here talking about children and how we actually see children. And one is abuse children, protecting children, information for children. The other one is about children in the workforce. The reality is that single income, dual income families are not going to be able to sustain in this part of the world. That's the reality. A lot of children are working every day to, to help their parents feed the family, mouth in the family. How do we, as leaders, both in the government and private sector, one, protect, but also think very differently, because I think the challenge is going to come to us. How do we think very differently to, pro to create safe environments where children work for children? It's something new, but I think we really need to think about that. Thank you.